Awesome. Welcome to the DK Custom Product Channel. My name is Kevin. This is Dwayne. And today we're going to show you guys around our shock building room for our next gen shocks. And uh, one thing you'll notice is we actually got Devin on camera. So before we get into the uh, tour of the shock room with Devin, as you said, we finally got him on video. Up to this point in time, we've done eight or 900 videos. Yeah. And he, besides the Haas video, he has like maybe a minute and a half of video time. He just doesn't like it. But he, he did good uh, showing us around the shock room. Uh, hope you enjoy that. Before we get into the tour of the shock room, want to let you know, these are, as you'll see, they are all handmade specifically for each customer. Yeah. And these shocks have an unparalleled lifetime warranty, which even covers rebuilds. So it's probably going to be the last pair of Harley shocks you would ever have to buy. Now, say you have a Sportster today, you upgrade to a, a bagger, you know, a year from now. There are subtle differences in these shocks between Sportster shocks and bagger shocks, but we'd be happy to rebuild them and remanufacture them to fit and operate on your bagger. If you have any questions about that, feel free to shoot me an email to support at dkcustomproducts.com. But again, they have a lifetime warranty. They'll easily yeah. exceed 50, 60, 70,000 miles, depending on what hell you put them through. But uh, Kevin just yeah. had his taken apart at 30,000 miles. They still look brand new. Right. So, uh, and, and say you do go from like a sports store or a Dyna to a bagger or a trike. Yes, we're going to, the springs are going to change. The internal valving is going to change. But the body and the shock eyes and yeah. the spherical bearings, all that stays the same. So it's something that, you know, you can save a lot of money on, as you said, because it is the last shock that you will need to get, even if you do need to have it rebuilt with different valving yeah. and springs, if you change up the bikes. Yeah, now if you watched our recent video, we said that we did a soft introduction of these, but we recently made the announcement of our next gen shocks, and we'll put a link to that video in the corner above. So without further ado, Here's Devin. Basically, as you can see, we're in, we're not in our main shop. It's just too dirty in there. There's too many dust particles in the air. It needs to be in a semi-clean room environment. So we're actually out in a outbuilding uh, by its own self, just for the shocks here. I mean, we try to keep it clean. I mean, it's not vacuum sealed or nothing like that, but it's, we keep it pretty clean. All right, so over here we have most all the parts laid out. So you can see here individually, every part will have you know, little customizations done to them to, to make them perfect for what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, I mean, everything from assembling, you know, the valve stems and the valve cores, you know, every single little step. A lot of this we make in-house. Some of it we have out uh, manufactured outside of house currently, but we do plan on, you know, moving more of that in-house. This section here is all like the intimidator valve. That's kind of the magic to it. And that's all the individual components to it that have to be assembled. Fitment tolerances and all of that are critical to have the quality of a part that uh, that we're looking for. But that's just kind of all laid out individual components. We try to prep stuff, do stuff in stages, just like this one part here. You know, it's got heavy duty spherical bearings in it, circle it's holding it in place. The valve stem, valve core, O-ring inside of there, all of this is pressed in and, and pre-prepped. All the cans have to be cleaned out. We screw the adjusters on them, have them ready to go. Of course, we got the bottom shock eye, also gets the uh, heavy duty spherical bearing in it with the circle clips holding it in. So just different levels of uh, preparation for assembly. Um, here's a gland, you know, it's got uh, two seals in it, uh, a bushing backer bearing that's pressed in, O-ring there. Everything has to, you know, basically be perfect on these for it to work. All of those are already prepped, ready to go. Um, the pistons themselves, you know, already drilled out. They got bleed holes in them. Specific for different model bikes. These are set up specifically for uh, 13 and 14 trikes right now. And, uh, of course, we try to keep everything very clean as we're doing it. Everything wiped down with WD-40 and lids on everything. And these are in a stage of preparation before they're ready to go in the can and uh, get oil, nitrogen, and then be tested. So again, this is, these are kind of just laid out. We get the rubber bumper. We have all kind of jigs to help install everything. Keep our rings in good shape. We got shim stacks, and they get prepped to this level with the gland on them, gland lock, rubber bumper. And at this point, they're ready for the uh, actually the intimidator valve. So these are the most <laughs> the the most critical part of it. So these are all kind of 
basically hand done together. I mean, we have to, you know, fit each part per part. Then it would be time to put the, uh, the bottom eye on and the intimidator valve, which again, we would go over here. For this, we've got uh, different vices and fixtures. They would go in here, everything's torqued to spec, red lock tighted in place. And at that point, you would have this. And that's basically all the moving parts of it, but then they have to be put in the can. What we'd actually do is we would set the depth of the divider cup inside of the shock. Then it would get filled up with oil. This goes in, gets clamped into place with the divider cup in there. Then the top goes on and everything gets tightened down, sealing everything off with it fully 100% full of oil. Then we'd have our cavity at the top for filling with nitrogen. We use a premium uh, shock fluid for these, uh, full synthetic for the anti-shearing properties of the oil. That's for all the valving and you know it going through all of that multiple cycles a second sometimes. All of our uh, shock ends get a, a spherical heavy duty spherical bearing pressed in. It's actually a press fit. It doesn't need the circlet, but that's just there for backup. We use these fixtures and hydraulic press, you know, for pressing those in, putting that in. After the inside of the shock's been put in, the oil's in it, uh, the cap's on. Well, again, we use vices and fixtures to tighten everything down. And then we actually run 200 PSI of nitrogen in it to test. You know, we're, we're checking for leaks, we're testing everything. So we fill it with 200 PSI, and at this point, it's got oil all over it, it's nasty. So then we've got a heated ultrasonic cleaner over here that we put them in for about three or four minutes a piece. It would be warm at the time, breaks down all that oil, then we can clean it off. Again, it's ultrasonic. It will mess the, uh, the recording equipment up if we cut it on right now. So once it's cleaned off, then it comes over here. We've got 200 PSI of nitrogen in it at the time. So we take the nitrogen out. We make sure that it's still got nitrogen in it. We, you know, we've got it in a water bath over there. So if there was any leaks, we would have seen it there. But then we let the 200 PSI out and then we fill it to the PSI that it gets uh, is required to give the customer. Then after that point, again, like Kevin had said, we dyno every single shock. So once it gets to that stage, it gets dynoed. Um, we make sure everything's good with it. It's just specifications. And then it goes up, up here on the wall. And then from that point, we put the, uh, valve caps on springs, perches, and that's a done shock. So as you can see, there's a lot that goes into those shocks. And man, we make these shocks for Sportsters, Dynas, Touring Models, Trikes, and 12, 13, and for Trikes, even 14 inches. And if you want to get your hands on a pair of these shocks, you can always find them at DKCustomProducts.com. If you have any questions about fitment at all for your model or any questions in general about these shocks or anything we offer, shoot me an email to support at DKCustomProducts.com. We hope you enjoyed the video, the tour of the shock room. You all ride safe out there.